What is up everybody? Welcome back. And in this lesson, I'm going to talk about some secret settings. And you know, of course, they're not all that secret. They're built right into the app. But they're settings that I don't hear a lot of people talking about much. And I really enjoy them. Uh, first things first, check this out. If I take one of my dirty overlay stamps, and I stamp it on the screen, but I don't let go, you see for a quick second, you can see my brush cursor. The same thing happens if I come over here and I grab one of my dream paints brushes, my misty brush. If I lower the opacity, if I increase the size and lower the opacity, you can't really see what I'm painting, but you see the circle. So you can actually see kind of where you're painting so that even if you're painting lightly, you're not kind of guessing if you're accidentally, you know, covering up your artwork. So that is called the brush cursor. Come over here to your wrench, come over here to preferences, and then down here you see brush cursor. Just flick that on, and that's it. Now you have a brush cursor so you can see what you're doing. Um, this is, in many other programs, you have a brush cursor built in, and for some reason in Procreate, it's turned off by default. I love it, and I swear by it, especially when you're using textures or soft brushes or things like this, you want to be able to see kind of what you're working with. And to be able to have that brush cursor makes a big difference for me. That is the first one. The second one would be in the same window. Come over here to your wrench and preferences and you have right hand interface. So I don't remember which way it comes when you first get Procreate because I've had it over here for so long, but I'm left handed. So I'm always using my pencil with this hand. I'm not going to reach over and, you know, I don't wanna lift up my pencil and then come over here and adjust the size or come over here and adjust the size. So I use it with my right hand. So if I'm painting something, I can easily just change the brush size and continue going like this without having to stop and start. That is a wonderful feature and just flip it. So if you're right-handed, maybe you flip it to the left side so that you can adjust your settings really easily from this side. Wonderful. The next one's going to be Project Canvas. Now, Project Canvas, you need to have another device connected. Whether you're using AirPlay or you're using a cable onto a monitor that has USB-C enabled, you can project your canvas onto that screen. What it's going to do is basically show you a stripped down version like this with no menus or anything of your canvas on the screen. That way, on your iPad, you actually see all your menus and you can see all your brush strokes and what you're doing, but you'll always have a reference of your canvas right there on the screen. Another way to do this without having a second monitor is to come over here to Canvas and Reference. Now, n most of the time, people click Image and then they you know, import an image that they use as a reference for their painting. But what I really like to do is keep it on canvas. Then you can pinch it and, and make it smaller and keep it as a little thumbnail there. So you're in here, you're zoomed in, you know, you have your pink color and you're kind of just going crazy. You're adding all kinds of stuff in here and you're wondering what does this actually look like in the, in the painting? And you don't have to zoom out, you know, lean your head back, squint, you know, tilt your head and look at it. You have it right here. You can do whatever you want with this image down here. And most of the time, I just keep it small. Then so when you're in here with the nitty gritty getting into the details, you can see like, oh, it's kind of extreme what I'm doing. You can kind of monitor yourself in that way. That way you don't have to keep zooming out and doing all that mess. So another cool feature that, you know, people usually use it for a reference image, but you can use your own canvas as a reference, which is really cool. Another one of the settings that I really like that I would consider a secret feature is customizing this little button. By default, when you press this, it'll bring up your color picker like this, but I use my finger for that. So why would I need a second one? So if you press on it, you can see I have a quick menu set up. From the quick menu, you can tap and hold on this and change any of these settings to maybe brushes that you want to use frequently, to different tools like recolor and smudge, and you can have these all set up to make your life much easier. You can come over to the wrench, 
go to preferences and then gesture controls. From gesture controls, you come down to quick menu. And here it says tap square. It says tapping square will invoke or dismiss quick menu. Just toggle that on and it'll automatically remove the other setting that you had set for that square. You can also come through these other settings and experiment with different type of gesture controls and shortcuts that might be better for your own usage. Now, once you set up your quick menu, you can easily open it like this, tap and hold, and then change whatever you need in your quick menu. So I have a couple brushes that I like to use. There's also flip horizontally, so you can easily, you know, check what your artwork looks from the other direction. Sometimes you can get a little bit of tunnel vision and forget how wonky things are until you flip them around. And lastly, the last hidden feature is going to be something that they moved. Originally, this feature was in the brush menu where you could adjust the smoothing of the pressure sensitivity on your brushes. Now they've added it in here with your pressure curve. Now, if you drag this up, you get a really aggressive pressure, pressure curve, which means by pressing lightly, you're gonna reach 100% uh, pressure. If you have a very gentle curve like this, then you're gonna have to press really hard to get to 100% um, of your pressure curve. It, likewise, if it's just in the center, then it's a flat pressure curve and you don't really need to mess with it. So once you're inside of the pressure and smoothing, you now have a, you now have a stabilization slider that's global. So if you're having a hard time getting smooth lines and you don't wanna go into each brush and add streamline onto it and all of that, you can simply increase your stabilization here and that will help you make smoother lines, smoother pressure transitions, and so on and so forth. So experiment with these and find out what's gonna work best for you because these are global settings. Using brushes aren't gonna change these settings here. So if you press too hard or if you press too soft, you're gonna wanna experiment with these pressure curves, okay? So those are my favorite secret settings inside procreate so have fun experiment and i can't wait to see you in visual tribe pro talk to you soon